Hey everyone, it's Greg again here with Seven Lights, and I wanted to make a quick video to update my followers specifically, people who have been uh, subscribers to my YouTube channel, people who have been following us on our Seven Lights account or any of our social media accounts. Um, I haven't really been making a lot of postings lately because I've had some serious health issues that uh, were very, very alarming. It uh, actually almost cost me my life. So I wanted everybody to at least know what in the world's been happening, bring you up to speed, uh, because I want to thank you also for your, the support that I've had from you for so many different years. Um, listen, in 2015, I was diagnosed with uh, a melanoma on my right shoulder blade. Uh, I was out back and I had my shirt off. My mom looked at it. She saw it. She's like, Greg, what's that on your back? And I'm like, I don't know. What, what's it supposed to be? And she says, it doesn't look right. You should get it checked out. So I went and I got it checked out. They, uh, you know, they shave a little bit of it off and then they send it out to a lab for a test. And they call me back a few days later and they say, uh, Greg, you have, me you have melanoma, malignant melanoma on your shoulder blade. You need to come back in and get this thing cut off. So when they do that, they do these big margins around it to make sure they get all of the, uh, all of the melanoma that they think could be around that area. And they, they do a good clean sweep around that. They did that, stitched it back up, sent that out again to another lab for testing and, ca and came back and said that it was clear. Uh, but because it was something that was serious, they sent me to a cancer clinic just to talk to them. And they said, Greg, your chances of having anything going on is like 0 0.00 whatever, less than 1%. Uh, so I didn't really worry about it. They said, just keep an eye on your health. And that's basically what happened. And then uh, towards the end of 2018, I was about, I don't know, 25 or 30 pounds heavier than, than I am right now. And uh, I was going to the gym. I was training really heavy. I was doing heavy squats, heavy leg workouts. I was doing deadlifts. I was trying to really put on some bulk and size. Uh, my wife was going to the gym as well. She was really pushing me to try to get intense with the gym. So I, I developed a lump under my right arm. And when it initially developed, I thought to myself, it's not anything cancerous. I felt like it was either a cyst or a swollen gland or something like that. Um, so I figured it would go away. It didn't go away for a while, but I still didn't freak out. And being in this business with all these products and knowing so many different people who are authorities and experts that are into all this anti-cancer uh, material. I started talking to some of them. I started taking a lot of different products. And uh, long story short, it gradually grew, but slowly, but I never felt sick and it never went anywhere else in my body at that time. And so I just let it go. And then uh, in 2019, uh, I started having a couple bouts where I'd have pain for a day or two. It'd go away. Um, it happened maybe two or three times. And that's when I started getting concerned. I'm like, I better go get this thing checked out. Um, so I went to the doctor. They looked at it. They couldn't tell what it was. They said, we don't know. Nothing. They, they drew some blood. They couldn't tell on blood what was happening. So they sent me off to get a biopsy. Uh, so I went and I got a biopsy. They called me back five days later. And that was the worst news I ever heard basically in my entire life. They said, uh, Mr. Ciola, uh, that tested positive for metastatic melanoma. So even though whatever they cut off my shoulder blade showed clear on the scans, um, somehow there must have been still something in there that ended up spreading to my armpit. So after that, they wanted to uh, go through a, a battery of different tests. So they did a brain MRI scan. They did a whole body PET scan. Uh, they did a colonoscopy. And in every scan they ran, they said they couldn't find it anywhere. It was just isolated to my right armpit. So... Um, I still was doing a lot of other things with nutritional supplements. Um, I didn't have a good health insurance in place at the time. This was in November of 2019, just before the year uh, 2020. So I had to get a, a new health insurance policy that would cover a pre-existing health condition and would be able to cover anything that I would have to do if I needed to go see a bunch of different doctors. So long story short, I agreed to do some immunotherapy. Uh, it started on January 8th, 2020. And I was working with a cancer clinic here in downtown Orlando. I also went to the Moffitt Center over in Tampa and uh, got a second opinion from them. And they actually gave me a different regimen for the immunotherapy. They wanted to use a lower dose than what the cancer doctor in Orlando wanted to use. Um, and they wanted to do uh, treatments for the entire year of 2020. 
uh, and they wanted to start out though using two different immunotherapy drugs and for the first four treatments every three weeks. So what happened, I agreed to that. So they started doing the first treatment January 8th. And then after the third treatment, they do blood draws every time you get a treatment because they need to check your enzymes, they need to check your blood cell count, everything that's going on to make sure that everything's uh, working out as planned. And so what happened with me was um, they did a blood draw and they found that my liver enzymes went through the roof. So somehow my liver was not responding to this high dose drug combo of immunotherapy. And so they actually thought I was in liver failure. The doctor told me this was a Friday and he says, um, you need to go. I made an emergency appointment for you across the street at this doctor that does liver therapy. They thought I needed a transplant. And he said, uh, plan on staying in there for the weekend. I don't think you're going to be going home. So that was devastating. My wife and I went out into the parking lot after and we were just bawling. It was, it was horrible. It was some of the worst news again, ever. Um, I thought this is unbelievable. I'm battling this. And all of a sudden now this might end up damaging or killing my liver. It was horrible. And, uh, but the long story short was this doctor put me on a high dose of prednisone, which counteracts immunotherapy and also helps to calm the liver down when you're having these type of problems. And so it took a little bit of time. And this was during the height of COVID. I had to keep going to the hospital every, uh, every couple of days. So Tuesdays and Thursdays specifically, I had to go check into the hospital and have the blood drawn to, to keep checking to see what was happening. So gradually over time, the liver numbers came down, down, down and went back to complete normal. Thank God I didn't need a liver transplant. It took, I don't know, maybe three months or four months total to get it back to complete normalcy. Uh, but what happened was through the power of prayer, through all the things I was doing with dietary supplementation and food and everything else, I was so strict and regimented about what I was doing that I think a combo of a lot of things happened. The big thing with immunotherapy is it, it helps to uh, open up the gateway of the immune system so it can see the cancer cells and turn on the T cells, natural killer cells to go in there and target the cancer cells. That's half the battle. And that's why immunotherapy has been so successful. There was some shrinkage of what was under my arm. And I actually, in December, before I ever started the immunotherapy, I went to a surgeon in Orlando and he looked at the size of it, which was, again, this was a big, big tumor at, at this point in time. It was about the size of an egg and it was wrapped around some nerve tissue underneath my armpit. And so the, the surgeon in December, he, he told me, I could get that thing out, but it's wrapped around nerve tissue and I can't guarantee that you won't have permanent arm damage from it, that my arm might not just, uh, it might swell for the rest of my life and I'd be fighting off all this inflammation and fluid in my arm because they'd have to take some stuff out or that he could nick some nerves that could cause permanent numbness or other issues in my arm. So I was nervous. I've got young kids. I'm great at athletics. I can throw a football like Tom Brady. I'm not kidding you. I mean, I know Brady's younger than me and he could probably throw it a little farther and a little harder, but I guaranteed I can, I can whip a football pretty darn good. And I do a lot of stuff with my kids. So I was like very apprehensive about the surgery. So we put it off. The cancer doctor said, let's not do that right now. Let's try the immunotherapy and see if we can shrink it and get that down before we go in there and operate. So after all this stuff happened with the liver, I talked to the cancer doctor and my only option at this point in time was to operate. And that was on April 25th, 2020. They went in there, they operated, they took this tumor out and, uh, Five days later, I had to go in and get these tubes moved, removed that they had in there. And he looked at it and the doctor that had removed the, cert, the tumor, he was, he was amazing. He came like running down the hall and he's like, oh my goodness, boom, he slaps the paperwork down on the ground and on the desk. And the paper said, no viable evidence of metastatic melanoma detected. So I was like, yeah, I mean, I totally believed at that point in time, I had completely beaten this cancer and it was never coming back. They did a, a PET scan on me shortly thereafter and it was clear they weren't picking up anything. And then they did another one in three months and then another one three months after that. Um, and all of them were clear. So I figured, hey, I don't ever have to worry about this again, at least to that level. Now I still knew I needed to take care of my health do the supplementation, exercise, prayer, and everything else that it takes to battle and fight cancer, especially something of melanoma's nature, which is really one of the worst you can have because it's very, very uh, contagious from the standpoint that it can spread throughout the body very easily. So you have to do the best you can with your health to try to ever, to try to never have that be a problem again. So after the third uh, PET scan in October, the doctor said, everything's clear. I don't think you should do a scan for uh, six months now because those scans do 
uh, put some radiation into your body. And so he didn't want me to keep getting exposed to the radiation. So he said, let's do it in six months. So that was in October. Today's April 19th. Actually, the, the scan that they were going to do was on April 20th of 2021. And uh, but what happened was after they did the, the surgery underneath my right arm, I kept shaving the hair off because I wanted it to heal and I wanted to see what was going on there. And so I did that for a while. And then around January or so of this year in 2021, I started letting the hair grow back. And a few times during that time frame, uh, between then and now, um, I had some issues where the hair follicles, a couple of them would swell up and they would hurt. They almost looked like pimples, but a couple of them were close to where they removed that tumor. So it made me nervous. And thank God, my wife, she says, Greg, don't wait six months. You better, you better move that scan up. Get that scan done as soon as possible to make sure you're fine. I don't care what else, what else is happening. Make sure you get it done. So I actually called Advent Health and uh, asked them if they could bump the scan up a lot sooner than what I had on in place. And so they did. And so uh, I ended up getting it done about six weeks earlier than when they had expected to get it done. So prior to that scan, though, the only thing that was happening was I started having some issues with my memory. Um, I was forgetting names, not close names of people that I know every day, but like people that I haven't seen in five years. I'm like, what's their name again? It was driving me, it was driving me crazy. I'm like, I can't believe I can't remember some of these names. And so it was really bugging me. I had no idea that it was linked to something that was going on with this cancer battle. So long story short, um, they did the PET scan on a, on a Tuesday and, uh, on Thursday, the cancer doctor in Orlando calls me back and that PET scan that they ran was picking up something in my brain. And I didn't know specifically what it was, except that he said, Greg, you need to get an immediate MRI, an emergency MRI for your brain. And so they were able to actually get something in on a Friday. That was a Thursday when he called. So Friday, I drove to Advent Health and they were able to do another MRI scan. And then late Sunday, I was able to go on to Advent Health to my patient portal and I was able to see it. But some of this stuff is so complicated to read for the average person. I couldn't even totally understand it, except that I saw that it was picking something up in my brain. And uh, I didn't even say anything to my wife because it was late Sunday. I had uh, the family was all here for dinner and I didn't want everybody to freak out because I didn't really, really know and I wasn't going to be able to get a hold of that doctor. So um, I waited until Monday. And on that Monday, my wife actually woke up in the morning. And she had, she didn't sleep well. So obviously God was revealing to her that something wasn't right. And then uh, she felt the Holy Spirit tell her that I have a brain tumor, but that I would be okay. And so uh, Monday, doctor, the doctor here in Orlando that I deal with, he called me up on the phone, obviously very alarmed, very concerned, telling me that I have a brain tumor and that I need to get operated on immediately and he was going to set up an emergency uh, surgery with a doctor in Orlando that he was uh, that he's worked with and knew. And so that doctor's office ended up calling me as well. And they booked me to go into the hospital on Tuesday and they did surgery on me on Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. Now, I haven't flagged what they actually found and you can't really see it. This was so now we're at not even three weeks yet, like two and a half weeks or whatever. They started down here and here, but, but this from like here, this is the scar line down. This tumor was in this whole area and very shocking, very shocking how something like that can spread. It was the size of probably an egg. They gave me the millimeter or the centimeters or whatever that I have written down somewhere, but it was huge. And the big thing that they found out when they sent me to the hospital on Tuesday, they wanted to do another MRI to compare it to the one they did on Friday. And so they ran another MRI, but then they operated on, operated on it on Wednesday. And when they did the operation on the 31st of March, one of the big things that was a serious concern was that this tumor was actually bleeding. This is why I was in a life-threatening situation. Um, a bleeding tumor can cause a brain hemorrhage, it can cause a severe stroke that could totally paralyze you or knock you down or kill you, whatever. And so this is why they felt compelled to do this immediate operation. And that's what happened. I had no choice. 
how did it spread from here? And all these scans were clear. And then it ends up with a tumor that big in the size of my brain that grew that fast. I don't know. This is the problem with melanoma because even though it could die here, you could still have melanoma stem cells from dead cells of cancer that can regrow. That's some of the problems you face. Also, I had still some faulty dental work going on inside my mouth. Um, I had a crown over here and I had a bridge over here that I actually had removed just prior to getting that surgery done because something was telling me that I don't like this metal in my mouth. They pulled this gold crown out of my mouth and it looked like algae scum and I had it for 25 years in my mouth. That stuff had to keep depositing into my immune system. Also this bridge that I had, same thing, it looked disgusting underneath there. And on top of that, there was metal and it wasn't gold. So I have gold on one side and I have some other kind of metal on the other side. I'm not saying that that's what caused the melanoma to spread. But what I'm saying is, I know that it probably destabilized my immune system and allowed me to have a, uh, a greater chance of having it spread as a result of not being able to clear my system of heavy metals, toxins, whatever, it could have done that. Also, I have not taken enough responsibility to completely detoxify my body on every front. I was still using some hair gel from the grocery store. I was still using some hairspray once in a while. I was still using some, some uh, toothpaste that I shouldn't have been using. I was using good deodorant for a long time. But the fact of the matter is we are being assaulted by chemicals across the board from our air, our water, our food, our cosmetics, you name it. I could get into so much and I'm going to try to make a bunch of other videos because I, I could spend hours and hours. I'm going to have to make a lot of short videos to get into a lot of details because I know people don't like to watch long videos. And so, and, and I'm almost coming to an end here because I just at least want to let my customers know where I stand. Right now, the cancer, they were able to get the entire tumor out intact. That's a miracle in and of itself because a lot of times, a lot of times brain tumors are not easy to get out entirely. They can only get fractions of them or parts of them. And uh, this one, they were able to get out. Now, the danger is because it was bleeding and because of the size of it, they don't know for absolute certainty, even though the MRI is showing they got it, that there isn't a speck, a spot, a stem cell, a something or other that's still up there. So I have to do some conventional treatments as well. But still, being in this industry, being a, a supplement connoisseur for most of my life, understanding some cutting edge things in this industry. I am doing everything I possibly can through our own company, through the products that we carry, through the other products that I'm finding across the board, other people that I'm talking to, things that I should take and things that I should do. And I'm putting it all into my body because I believe I am going to live. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, April 18th, Sunday, I went to church, High Point Church in Orlando. Pastor Keith used to play for the Orlando Magic. And I, I asked him, um, a day before if I could get prayed over at church, because this comes from the book of James, that uh, somebody that's getting sick or going through troubles, that they can go to the church and have the elders of the church pray over them, anoint them with oil, and that the prayer of the faith shall save them. So that's the big thing. I believe in the book of James. I believe in those prayers. I had that prayer happen last year when I had the tumor under my right arm, and it got rid of it. So it was an amazing prayer. And what was really exciting about that prayer was at the end, the pastor uh, was revealed John chapter 11, verse four, which says, but when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so that the son of God may be glorified through it. So I totally believe that. And I receive that, that God is going to get the glory. This is the worst form of cancer basically that anybody can have because melanoma actually killed my uncle in 2011 uh, he got it before a lot of this advanced melanoma treatment has, has made it onto the market. In the last, I don't know, six years, there's been the biggest breakthrough in cancer curing and cancer uh, remission with melanoma than, any, than ever before because of immunotherapy. Now, immunotherapy is not a guarantee. Uh, and obviously, I had some issues with it on my liver, but the dosage was too high. The fact is, I have fair skin. I have light eyes. And I have ge genealogy on my mom's side and my dad's side that have both battled different issues with uh, melanomas. So for me to have that problem is more uh, genetic than anything. However, it still could have been some of the metals. It could have been some of the toxins. They all could have played a role. I don't know. I've got to make some separate videos. 
I've had some dramatic uh, encounters with God, specifically with Psalm 91. Um, and I'm not going to get into all that on this specific video, other than to say the last verse of Psalm 91, it's God talking. And it says, with long life, I will satisfy thee and show thee my salvation. I believe that. And I believe there's an important message that God wants to use through me to teach people about health and nutrition, about how to fight a lot of these different diseases spiritually and physically as well, because there's a lot of things we're doing to our bodies that are causing these problems. Is it, it isn't just something that comes on you. We're exposed to too many different things. So that's what I'm going to try and do in the future with a lot more videos. If I have time to make as many as I can, I will. Anyway, so all of you that have been following me for all this time, thank you so much. God bless you all. I appreciate your time.